Yes. So uh, welcome back, guys. We are going to discuss about Oracle Epix validation. Uh, so for that, uh, let me take you through the workspace what we have created for for our study purpose. So I am going to log in into the workspace first. The credential is same. Uh, I want you guys to keep uh, practicing this thing. That will help you to understand more about it, and you can ask your doubt. over here or maybe uh, maybe at uh, i mean this future developer app raise question please okay so uh, last time what we have done we have created an application and here we have uh, in this app what we have done we have uh, we have a tab here employee tab and in this tab we had this report and here we have created a normal form okay a form like this so and uh, we have written a page process behind this form which were helping us to insert or update the data okay so this is what we done so far in our last web session now what i'm going to do i'm going to explain you about the validation we had we have certain validation thing so uh, so that i'm going to explain you today uh, so uh, so one by one we'll take all the case studies case scenarios for that okay so uh, so let me click on this create and uh, so the very first thing what i want to show you that uh, this field should be should not be null if if a user is trying to keep it null and he he is trying to keep uh, he is trying to insert or create the value uh, he sh it should not allow them to insert the value without keeping it null okay or maybe blank you can say so for that what we can do here in page uh, backend thing uh, so here this is the back side of the page or you can say all the codes or everything you can write here and that that will behave uh, here in front of the page actually okay so uh, so 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 in this pan we have uh, we have a, we have an option called validation over here as you can see above this process we have validation and we can write all our validation stuff over here okay how we can do that let me delete i have done something here let me delete the old one now this is complete fresh page okay and uh, here is our form so so uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to create a validation that if a user will keep it null and he'll try to create the data it will not allow them to create the data okay so for that here is a validation i have to uh, i have to look into this uh, this thing um, the item actually okay so we have two ways to create the validation either we can directly click on this plus button or what we can do here we have this item we can click right click on this and then we can uh, click on this create validation so as you can see both will be going to do the same thing actually either you can do right click over the item or you can click on plus button and then you can get into this thing okay now give a nice name to this uh, validation let's say uh, employee number i'm just going to give employee number okay and keep going down here you have uh, the validation stuff so what you can do here you have lot of types over here as you can see you have multiple uh, you know way to create the validation so i'll create the very easy one first of all this is item is not null so let me do select for this item is not null which item i want that item to be employee number okay so whenever i item will be null it will show an error message what error message that error message you can write here so i'll say that employee number or please fill employee number like that i have just entered uh, error message okay when you come down Uh, here you will be having this thing display location so where you, you where you want your message to uh, uh, to be associated with so this is the item actually and along uh, in line with this uh, in line with this item your message will be visible okay so here here you, again you have multiple options in line with the field in line uh, with the field and in notification so i'll show you what what does it mean okay 
so let me say, let me uh, let, let let's keep the default one first okay now here you have server side condition so on which condition you want this validation to be executed so you 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 uh, you want to say that uh, just when i'll create click on create button this validation should get executed like that okay so here you have one uh, server side condition either you can give a condition on button or what you can do you can write your uh, uh, SQL code, PL SQL expression, uh, and when that expression will get executed and that will be true, then only this validation will get executed. That that can also be done, but uh, as of now, I'm going just going to take this create uh, on this uh, button click. Uh, this validation will get executed. Okay, so I have done this thing. Now let's save it. Now go back to our application. Let me close it and le let me refresh the page. So we have done it so far. Now we'll click on create button and uh, let's keep it blank and click on this create. So as you can see, we got this message. Please fill the employee number. Okay, because we have created that validation. So this is how validation work. So this is one way to create the validation. Okay, now again, let's go to this place. And as I was telling you about this, so let's select another option here, display location. So I'll say in line with field, okay? And we'll save it. Let's go to this page. And as you can see, we are getting message here and here at both the places, okay? So when I'm saying, uh, because we had uh, selected the, uh, the previous option, that was option, this is. Now what we have done in line with the field, uh, we have saved it. Now let's see what is going to happen. Let me close it, click on create and click on create again. So as you can see, we didn't get that notification message. We just got this error message over here. So it is up to you how you want your, uh, I mean, how your requirement is actually, how your client wants you to validate the field. He wants it here or he wants it here like that. Okay. So uh, so as you can see, we have a lot of, uh, I mean, other ways. If you'll select only this in line in notification, you'll not get that, uh, you'll not get this thing over here. You'll get only notification. Let me show you. Click on create and click on create again. So as you can see, you got it here, but you did, didn't get it here. Okay, so this is one way to create validation. Okay, so here the logic was, we don't want this item to be null. That was, that, that was what our logic. So now what I want to do, I want to change this thing. Let's see, I'm going to select uh, PLSQL function body returning Boolean. Okay. So again, this is a kind of a function body. You're writing PLSQL function body and that you want if a, a Boolean is going to return over here. So Boolean is again, true and false type. A true is getting returned. Then uh, you are going to fire a, a error message. If it is getting false, then a error message will not get fired. How we can do that? We can do this. You can, you have to write your uh, command, something like this. I'll show you over here. So let's say I'm going to, I'm just going to focus on this P3 EMP number. So if P3 EMP number is equal to null or maybe blank, then return true, okay? Else return false, okay? So here we have written that if uh, this thing is blank, we have not written anything over here. So if this is blank, then it should be returning true. Otherwise it should be returning false. And uh, let's valid validate it. You have to do end if, end if, validate it, okay. So so when this will be blank, then only it, it will return some true value, okay. So if it is blank, then the true value will get returned and the error message will get triggered. Let's save it and see it over here in the form. Close it, now click on create. Then let, let's keep it blank itself and click on create. So as you can see, we got this error message. And how we got it, we have written a validation over here, which is actually of PLSQL function body, which is returning Boolean expression and Boolean is nothing but true and false. So this is another way to create a validation. First first of, first of one I have shown you about not null. Second one I'm showing you like this. You can write your, so here 
I'm just showing an example. Actually, you can write your complete logic over here. So I have written a simple statement under if you can write your complete business logic over here. And accordingly, you can return true and false. And accordingly, you can create your validation. I mean, control your validation like that. Okay. So now you, we have another way to do this thing is function returning error text. Okay, let's see this one. So what, what it does. So this is again, another type of uh, validation actually, how we can do it. Uh, for this, what we can do, we can create a, uh, again, begin. And then here you have to write if, uh, if uh, P3 EMP number equals blank, then, so there, what we have done, we have simply written a uh, return true. Now what we are going to write here, we are going to write a complete text message. So text me message will be, please fill the information. Okay. Else null. We are not going to do anything over here. And then, uh, and if, and let's see what happened. Click on validate. Click on validate again. Yeah, so it got validated. Now click on okay. And as you can see, we don't have, we didn't have this error message box. When we were, uh, when we were, when we have done, we have created another type of validation. It was there, but when we have created this, returning error text message, this validation box is uh, error message box is not there because we have written, we have written our error message over here itself. Okay. So this is another type of validation. Let's save it and uh, click on run. I mean, uh, refresh this page. Then click on create and let's create again, click on create. So cannot, okay. So this is somehow not working. Let me click on, click on, let me see, get into this again. Okay, so let's do one thing. We'll declare and we'll create a variable over here. And you be your number type and we'll uh, assign, you know, this value into that variable first, because I think so that that might create problem. So I'm just assigning this value into this, I mean, uh, variable. Okay. And now here I'm writing, going to write if V underscore num is null. Okay. Like that. So as you can see here, this is assignment operator. This is not equal operator. I'm assigning value, this value into the variable. Uh, validate it. Click on okay. Save it come to this place, refresh this page first, click on create and uh, create. So as you can see, we got this message, another type of validation we have seen. Uh, so yeah, so, so th this is the way to create a validation over. So here I'm showing you only for one item. You can create validation on multiple items. Let's say if you want to create your validation over here, salary field, and uh, what you want to do for salary field, let's say I'm going to create a validation on salary field. So salary should be uh, greater than, or it should not be zero actually. So I'm going to create a validation on salary. And uh, so here we have another type of thing. Item is not null or zero. As you can see here, we have this option. Item is not null or zero, which item I want the salary one three salary and I'll write here salary should not be null or zero should not be null or zero. Yeah. And uh, I'll go down. I'll do button as create. Now click on the save and give a name to this actually salary, click and save again, go back to your page, close it, click on create. Let's, or let's keep it blank itself. Let's put a zero over here. Now click on create. So as you can see, we got two uh, error messages. One is salary should not be null or zero. Uh, and the uh, 
the first one is please fill this information when you click it you'll get into you'll uh, key, i mean your uh, cursor will get uh, over here when you click on this your cursor will get over here like that so this is how you can give validation to every item that is all up to you what is requirement is or how you want your item to be restricted with the user actually so you have you are having multiple options over here you just uh, ex uh, explore by yourself as you can see here item equals value so if you want your item to validate validated for particular value that you can do from here or if you want your item not to be that value you can do it from here so you have lot of options over here okay so uh, yes that is it for today the validation thing any uh, any doubt or any query uh, friends yes or no uh, yes please oh, sure. so in case of a salary and i got that one but what about the date means format issue if you want to make this format can you do that validation also yes so format is again another thing let's say if you uh, if you uh, create any uh, date so this date is coming in this format okay now you want it in dd mo and yy format so that is another yeah. another stuff mm -hmm. what you can do for that click on this date item do you have date item uh, go mm -hmm. below and uh, here you as you can see the format mask option is there under appearance okay yeah so yeah. when you click on this the right side uh, this menu option you'll get these many formats over here okay so okay. let's click on this format okay dd mo and yy format mm -hmm. click on it save it now let's run it again click on create page and select any date 23rd and you're getting data something like this got it so this is how you can control your format i mean how you want your data to yeah, be visible to the you. user like that yes yeah i wanted to also ask a question concerning on uh, the date validation uh, uh, you find that uh, uh, the, the date validation date validation okay yes we find that uh, in some areas when we create uh, such forms we don't want uh, users to pick the current date as their higher date maybe maybe they've got hired in 2015 right so right we right. want to validate that so again you have that option here it says so date picker shouldn't pick today's date by default so what you can do you, uh, here in date item itself you have minimum date and maximum date this is the option okay right. so you can mention your minimum date and maximum maximum date so your date field lies between these these two values only if you want to highlight any date a current date or any any date you can do it from here like that so you have all these options over here itself so for that no need to give validation you can control it from here if you have complex uh, business logic on date field itself you can do it over here so again you have uh, you have you'll get something uh, to restrict your date and all those thing your voice yeah, or you can write your plsql expression to control that part got it oh, so you have actually yeah. two ways to uh, work on i mean with the date fields yes okay no thank you sure